Welcome back, graphic designers. Um, in this demonstration, I'm going to build a navigational menu system um, that'll work uh, to some extent in a mobile situation and a desktop situation. So a navigational item that is kind of responsive. Um, I'll assume that you guys have uh, penned this, um, uh, forked this pen. Maybe we can fork a pen from here so that you can save it into your dash, uh, dashboard on code pen uh, and refer back to it at some stage. I'm not going to be using any JavaScript, so I'm just going to pull that out, pull that down, and we'll have a look at the markup here. Um, so I've got a little web page layout here. It's got some content and a H1 tag um, the whole page is wrapped in a class called my box and you might remember that my box class from the um, pill shaped submission button we've recently made um, I've also got a my page class in there I've added a my page class it's got my box and that wraps around my page uh, and you can see where that ends there and then inside that a heading a couple of paragraphs an ordered list like so uh, so an unordered list excuse me and then some more paragraphs of text um, so above that we're going to add a, a menu so above kind of my, where my website is, I'm going to add a menu. Uh, and we're going to make a menu out of um, an unordered list. So similar to the uh, unordered list we've got here, um, which you use to make bullet points. I'm going to use that to and use that kind of structure to make a menu item as well. Um, let's have a look at the CSS that I've already implemented. A reset so I'm resetting some of those box model items I've pulled in Roboto as a um, an import so pulling in that style sheet from Google so that I can load up Roboto added um, a color to the body so down oops down here you'll see that that background color um, added the uh, added Roboto into the page um, given the paragraph and a few other elements, some style here, um, and also some padding around my page. Um, so my box is floating in the uh, in the centre there. Um, and it's got a mar margin hack on it, so it floats in the centre. And it's colored white. All right, let's get started building the menu. First thing we're going to need to do is actually add some markup in for the menu. And I'm going to do it in between these two little sections here. To add an unordered list. Um, just close that off there. And then I'm going to add some list items, LI for list items. Just close that off as well um, and I suppose it's going to be the standard kind of website for um, a menu for a website so we're going to add some things like home um, and maybe like services and about us and that kind of stuff but each of these items here I'm going to wrap inside an anchor tag as well so it's going to be an anchor tag inside a list item. So I'm just going to add a dead link. And close off the anchor tag on the other side there. So list item, anchor tag, content, and then closing off both of those elements there. Uh, and we've got one item there. So let's copy that a couple of times. I'm going to make um, four elements in my 
navigational menu. Maybe we can have some services. And for this website, um, case studies. And what else? Contact page. Something like that. So that's all we need to do in Mark in terms of markup. Um, uh, apart from just fix this typo here. Always got to start off with a type typo, don't I? Um, now we can see that uh, these are in fact links. Now we're going to use CSS to kind of configure those links that we've made into something that's a little bit more presentable. Um, and how am I going to do that? Well, we did quite a few things in the um, in the previous pill shape box um, video that will be useful. So, like things like um, adding a, uh, a text decoration property to take away the um, uh, under underline from the links. Um, what else do we do? Change the color of the links. We're going to use some properties to remove those bullet points as well. Um, so let's have a look at. Um, let's get started. Let's get started um, styling. Maybe the um, um, the unordered list that we've got here. We're going to actually have to give our unordered list a class so that we can um, so that we can target it separately from the other un unordered list on the page. So we've got actually two unordered lists on the page. So this one here and this one here. And if I give this top one a class, it means that I can target that separately and leave this uh, content intact. So let's do that. I'm going to first of all just target my now. I can just target my dash now. Um, and remove the bullet points. Let's, uh, let's change the list style to none. That's, uh, that's got, um, uh, got that going already. Um, let's go inside there, uh, inside my nav. And target all the A the anchor elements inside there. Um, so we did a bit of this stuff in the previous video. Let's change the background color to a red. You can choose whatever colors you like. So that's looking good. Um, we want to change the color of the text to white. So it's reversed out. Oh god, typo. Um, we want to remove that underline. So change the text decoration to none as well. Um, we're going to change the display. Um, change, we're going to change the display of the um, these items to block um, and so that allows the item to kind of display in its full width so running from um, instead of like the background just chopping off after the content it will spread out over the um, over the whole kind of distance there. So let's have a look at that, looking pretty good. Um, what else are we going to do there? I'm going to give it some padding. We do that before the text decoration. Give those items some padding. 
um, 20 at the top and bottom and 40 left and right. Awesome. Looking good. Um, now, what about we add a um, bit of a border so that, that we can create some differentiation between those items as kind of button elements, I suppose. So I'm going to put a border two pixels um, that is going to be solid and white. Six F's, S's, six F's for white. Um, so that's good, but I want to make it just at the bottom. Awesome. So that's looking almost like um, a good kind of set of navigational elements, buttons. Uh, for the top of a web page. Excellent. Um, we'll obviously want to give our users a little bit more feedback regarding uh, to let them kind of know that that is a button and see that the cursor does change because it's an anchor tag. But let's also add another kind of rollover state to the um, to the hover state. And we'll just change the background color. To some kind of gray. See how that looks. Yeah, beautiful. All right, so we've got our navigational uh, item good to go for our mobile view. So those buttons kind of stack on top of each other quite nicely, separated out and they've got a, a rollover. You could add um, an active state there for when it's uh, when the button's clicked. Um, but let's add a media query now to change the, how these buttons operate when we've got, you know, when our browser is at, our, at its widest. So I'm gonna add in a media query. You'll remember how to write a media query. Uh, we're going to check for a condition, and then once that condition is met, we'll add new uh, CSS rules um, inside the media query. We're going to check the, for the condition of min width and a min width of 600 pixels. Once we've written the um, once we've written the media query, we can add um, states that will change or new rules, new CSS rules um, inside the media query. What we're going to do is use Flexbox to change um, the stacking order of these elements here, so that if we look at this website on a desktop on a widescreen, um, those buttons will be next to each other horizontally, a horizontal navigation system, but when it's on your phone, they'll stack on top of each other um, like so. So we're going to target um, my nav again, and we're going to just simply change the display um, property to flex. So that's looking pretty good. Uh, getting there anyway. Um, we're also going to change the, well, I'm not sure I added justify content. Um, so I've just noticed that 
this is, isn't displaying as exactly as I'd expected. Um, we've got a bit of a gap on either side here that I might fix up, and I think that I could fix that up by adding um, a zero margin right at the top to um, this whole list here. And that's got those guys uh, looking a little bit better. Um, so you can see now that uh, when we move from um, thin to wide, it changes. One final thing that doesn't seem to be right is that, oops, is that my buttons here should be spaced out equally. So I've got some kind of something wrong here. And it'll be inside the media query. Ah, oh, I've made a typo here. This should be justify content. Oops. Like so. Excellent. So that's much better. Sort of separating our buttons out across um, the top of the. Uh, the page there, so that's a horizontal nav, and then changes down to a vertical nav uh, this way. Um, so I hope that's useful. Um, using hover to give your uh, your button or your navigation elements um, some dynamics and some feedback for your users.